Thank you very much for letting us come here and address you today. My name is Dave Gahari. I am from the great state of New Jersey. I'm kidding, it's not. <laughs> it is New Jersey, but great state New Jersey sometimes. Anybody from New Jersey out here? One lady went. <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> New Jersey is actually a very nice state. Uh, many people don't realize New Jersey is mostly farms. You know, they think that it's uh, urban areas or Jersey Shore or gangsters or Tony Soprano, but I grew up next to a farm and, and uh, very rural. As a matter of fact, New Jersey has more horse farms than Kentucky. So people would be surprised. And, you, you know, you go to the west part of New Jersey and uh, the people there have deep southern accents, which, again, would be... Wh where, where were you born, if you don't mind me asking? Newark, okay, well, not Newark. <laughs> yeah. Tri Palisade? Lost my accent, but next to Fort Lee. Another New Jerseyite. All right. Anybody else want to admit it right now while you have a chance? All right. Don't I've blame you. Have you been there? <laughs> well, let me tell you why we're here. Uh, I was in the Navy, and I enlisted in the Navy in 1980, and I uh, served aboard a a nuclear-powered submarine called the USS Skate, if anybody ever heard of it. But uh, the Skate, the keel was laid in 1955, and the Skate was the first submarine to uh, surface uh, under the polar ice cap. So it, it breached the uh, polar ice cap, and it, and it uh, spread uh, the ashes of some famed British explorer. So I was on that submarine, and it was a uh, nuclear fast attack submarine. There's two kinds of submarines. Uh, one is a fast attack, which is a hunter-killer. Our job is to uh, you know, kill surface ships, of course, the enemy. And uh, another job is to spy on the enemy. So we would go to different locations and, uh, you know, like you see in the movies, and the periscope goes up, and, and then we just watch what's happening. The other type of submarine is a ballistic sub, which uh, sits on the bottom of the ocean and uh, for six months and waits for uh, the order from the president to launch uh, nuclear missiles. Hopefully that's not going to happen with North Korea. But that is, if anything did happen, that is most likely the way that it would happen. We have our subs all around the world. They're our primary deterrent. Uh, so I served in the Navy. I was injured, and uh, I was medically retired. While I was in the Navy, I had never heard of the ship, the USS Liberty, before. Has anyone here, uh, by a show of hands, heard of the USS Liberty? Please, if you could. Okay, so just about five people. Um, what, what do you know about the Liberty, ma'am? That it was a ship that carried logistics during World War II. Right, okay, all right. And down here, somebody raise their hands. I know the same, thing. same thing. And another hand, same thing. Does anybody know anything other than that? Okay, well, the USS Liberty was a ship that was converted from a World War II cargo ship, which ferried uh, cargo and, uh, and soldiers from the Pacific to the uh, uh, theaters of war uh, in Asia. And they converted in, in the, uh, the mid-1960s as a spy ship. And what it did was it would patrol in its, uh, in its area and listen to uh, communications. So just like now, you know, the NSA, uh, we, we hear that the NSA uh, listens to all of our phone calls or our emails or all that good stuff. Well, that didn't exist back then. The Liberty was the most sophisticated spy ship in the world. And uh, what happened was that 50 years ago, last June, it was uh, patrolling the Eastern Mediterranean in international waters, listening to what was happening because there was a war that had broken out called the Six-Day War. It was between Israel and a few Arab countries. While the Liberty was in international waters, they were attacked uh, viciously by unmarked jet aircraft and torpedo boats. Five torpedoes were launched at the Liberty. This was June 8, 1967. 
And they uh, murdered uh, 34 Americans, and they wounded 174. Out of a crew of 294, that's a 70 over 70% casualty rate. Planes were launched off of some aircraft carriers to come to the rescue of the Liberty, and they were recalled twice. First time by Secretary of Defense McNamara, the second time by the President of the United States, Lyndon Baines Johnson. They let the Liberty sit in the water with body parts all over the deck. Not only had they shot over 5,000 armor-piercing shells in the deck, or in the ship, the skin of the ship, and a 40 by 40 foot torpedo hole, but they also uh, put over 1,000 uh, rocket and cannon holes this size into the ship. The country who attacked it was Israel, who claimed that it was a case of mistaken identity. Of course, one or two shots is a case of mistaken identity, not 5,000 or 1,000 or even 100. The reason that nobody knows about the Liberty is because our own government has covered it up since June 8, 1967. In fact, the sailors, and there were a few Marines and a few civilians on the Liberty, were threatened that if they ever mentioned what happened, that they would go to jail or worse. And for the longest time, they never said anything. When I found out about the Liberty, I couldn't believe it like a lot of people do. I, and then I, I found out more and more, and I, I knew it was a national disgrace. The worst part about it, perhaps, besides the government cover-up, our own government, is that the USS Liberty is the most highly decorated ship in the history of the United States Navy for a single action. But nobody knows about it because of the cover-up. So we decided that, beside write a book about it, that we were going to make a movie. And that's why we're here to talk to you about that. And the fellow who's going to come up next was actually on board that ship on June 8, 1967. He saw what happened. He saw the carnage. He saw the misery. He was injured, as most of the Liberty crewmen were, but he stayed with the ship until it got to dry dock and then, then when it got back to the United States under a cloud of darkness because they, they didn't want anybody to know what happened, that Israel attacked our own Navy ship in international waters. Well, I want to introduce to you uh, a very close friend of mine, and we get closer every day. His name is uh, Philip Francis Turney. He's from Colorado. He enlisted in the Navy in 1964. He served his country honorably. In fact, he, he re-enlisted. He served his country twice, and he has two honorable discharges. Uh, he's a great man, and uh, he has an incredible story to tell you. What we'd like to do is afterwards, if anybody is interested, we have Phil's new book called Erasing the Liberty, which he'll show you. If anybody is interested in getting this book, which tells you the story uh, through the eyes of not just Phil, but through the eyes of many survivors and also other military people who had come to the aid of the Liberty, if, if, you, if you're interested, you can get the book. They're $25. Phil will autograph it, and he'll inscribe it, whatever you'd like. And every uh, penny that goes to the, fr from the sale of books goes to the movie. So we want to make a full-length feature film about the USS Liberty. There's never been a movie made about it. How could the most decorated ship in the history of the United States Navy not have a movie made about it? That's why it's a national disgrace. But every year they make movies that are complete garbage. We know, we see them. I don't watch them, but I know the junk that comes across. I see it on the internet. So that's why we're here. I appreciate your time. And uh, please, um, let's give a, uh, a warm welcome to uh, my good friend, Phil Turney. Thanks, Dave. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my watch right here so I don't run over time. Uh, thank you, Dave, for the kind introduction. Uh, ladies, uh, I want to thank you uh, very, very much for giving us the opportunity to be here, talk to you all, and uh, hopefully get to know you. 
Uh, first of all, uh, I thank you for being here because you're all patriots. And God bless you for that. And for that, you deserve a great big hand. All of us are patriots, especially you ladies, for being here with all the support you give your husbands and friends, brothers. It's, it's, it's just a wonderful dear, a deal, and thank you very much. As Dave said, uh, I'm a survivor. Uh, I joined the military in uh, 1964 when I was 17 years old. Uh, did two tours of duty in Vietnam before I got aboard the Liberty. And uh, as Dave said, it was the most sophisticated spy ship in the world. Now, our ship uh, was in the Mediterranean. We were called there very quickly. Something was going on, and we found out that the war had begun. Uh, we got on station early that morning. We were overflown by Israeli re reconnaissance aircraft for approximately eight hours. Uh, they uh, phoned back to their uh, headquarters that they knew we were an American ship and friendly and called us by name, USS Liberty. USS Liberty was clearly painted on its bow and its stern. Our American flag was always flying at all times. We never took it down. We were never uh, out of international waters. We were in international waters at all times. Never once did we stray. But all of a sudden at 2 o'clock we were attacked by a foreign government that we didn't know who was attacking us. They used unmarked jet aircraft. So we just assumed it was the Arabs. Now, when they, they overflew us with the recon aircraft, so I'm just going to back up here a second, they, uh, the planes would come so low, we could wave at the pilots and they'd wave back. So we felt great that our great Israeli friends were there to help us. And I want to be very, very clear about this. We have many, 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 many Jewish American supporters in this country that want this book right here, Erasing the Liberty, to become a movie because the truth has to come out. This is the greatest, the greatest story never told. It's been hidden for 50 years and 50 years too long. That's why I wrote the book. This is my second book. My first book was called What I Saw That Day. We came up with the name Erasing the Liberty because that's what they're doing to this great ship and the patriots that died aboard that ship that day. 34 of my shipmates were slaughtered. 174 others were wounded, including myself. Some of the wounded were so badly wounded you couldn't hardly look at them. They were so torn apart. It would break your heart. You'd break into tears. We didn't get any help for 18 hours when help was only 15 minutes away and they recalled the jet aircraft and left us out there alone to die for 18 hours. It was... Uh, one of the most horrible things that I've ever been in in my life. I hope nobody ever has to go through that ever, ever again. And that's, that's why I'm doing this. That's why Dave and I are doing this. And I, I, I hope that the uh, USS Liberty survivors, that I, I do them proud by being here, telling this, this story for them as, as well as myself, because when I wrote this book, I wanted to get as many survivors in there as I could, rather than just me, because this is not just my story. It's their story, and it's your story. It's America's story. You deserve to know the truth. Your government should not hold, not hold a darn thing back hold, uh, from you. Nothing. We pay them, they should tell you the truth. If we'd have taken care of this 50 years ago, we wouldn't be having the problems we have right now in the Middle East. It's almost going to get us in a war if it, if it, if it won't already. So this book is, is brought out to, to, to bring out the best and the very worst in humankind. And you'll read it in this book. It's the most comprehensive book that's ever been written about the USS Liberty in history. And I, I beg you for your patriotism to buy my book, support the movie, and support America. Because my dad told me, you know, if you're going to get something done, go to a woman. <laughs> so that, that's exactly right, and I know that. So that's why I'm so happy to talk to the women first. It's your wonderful auxiliary. 
And uh, uh, kind Madam President, thank you so much for letting us be here. Uh, it is uh, so graceful, graceful, graceful of you to do that. And it, it means a lot to me and the crew, the USS Liberty. And I know if those guys were here right now, they would all get up and applaud you for your patriotism and your help in making this, this great movie. And reading this great book, as Dave said, this book is on sale for $25. I've got about one minute left, and I'm not going to break the rules here. I'm going to keep it down to 15 minutes. Uh, Dave took nine. I'm going to take six. So uh, sorry about that, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's just uh, kind of the way it is. You know, we get started, and it's hard to quit talking about this because it means so much to us, and it means so much to America. So uh, show your patriotism, show your love of country, show your love of your family, and let's get the truth out. Like I say, this book is selling for 25 bucks. It usually goes for 50 to 100. We would not sell it to patriots for any more than basically what we paid to get the book printed. It's 25 bucks. I'll tell you what, 25 bucks will go a long ways to helping us make this movie. We get a lot of donations for a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. And we thank them every, every one. A lot of them live in the basement apartments. They don't have any money, but they, they want to help get this story out. So we're counting on you patriots, you wonderful women, to help us out. Thank you for giving me the honor and the time to speak with you. God bless America and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.